see those converging trends of both the commoditization of the components that are inside consumer electronics with that of big data and to, to then come up with a new mission. Uh, and a mission that would not be imaginable before. And that mission is to image the whole world every day. This is at three to five meters per pixel. And this is half of our company is the aerospace side. Uh, then the second half of our company is a software company, which is to, to make global change visible, accessible, and actionable. So half aerospace, the whole world every day, and half software, which is, which is the whole point, which is to actually uh, allow for uh, businesses, governments, individuals, nonprofit organizations to, to get contextual information about the world around them and then use those data and these, these tools to, uh, to make better decisions. The traditional remote sensing approach in uh, commercial remote sensing is, is a tasking approach. Uh, and, and there are singles of sensors that are up in space that, uh, that need to be tasked to a, a customer. And as a result, uh, it's fairly expensive. Uh, it's limited coverage, because if you're looking to the left, you miss everything else that's happening. Um, and, uh, and it's a highly specialized industry. And so it takes a long time to gain access to that information. There's lots of humans that are in the loop. And as a result, and it's, it, it's very expensive. So. Small market, very expensive, leads to very expensive products and services. And uh, what we wanted to do was a monitoring mission, is to launch a constellation of satellites that do the same thing all the time, which is look nadir, take a picture, um, store it, and transmit it when it's over a ground station. This gives you global coverage. This gives you, uh, it lends itself to automation, which then means that uh, it's relatively low cost to operate it in addition to speed to access to the end user and the customer. So we're a monitoring mission. Over the last five years, we have focused on the space segment. Uh, that's where we started from the very beginning. Uh, with that insight to image the whole world every day meant that we need to build a mass producible spacecraft at scale and operate it at scale. We've gone through 13 different iterations of our technology and, has, and have tested that into space. Um, and uh, we, we just finished a production run of 120 satellites and that took us six weeks. So in-house, inside of our organization, uh, we build mass manufacture imaging spacecraft. Build 13, which is what we're in production with right now, is now power positive, which means that uh, it can be on the entire time. Um, additionally to that, we've deployed a large ground station network. We have about three dozen ground stations in seven different countries at the moment. Uh, and with that, we are able to automatically um, control the fleet of imaging spacecraft. So that's half of what we needed to do to image the whole world every day. And uh, to get into space, uh, we've gone up into space many times. We've had 11 successful launches over the last three years. We've launched a total of 133 satellites into space. The majority of them uh, came out of the International Space Station. Um, and all of this was to test our end-to-end -end system, uh, to get ready for operational orbit, which is a sun-synchronous orbit. And, and over the next 12 months, we have three launches that will allow for us to get to that daily update of the planet. And I mentioned before, we've launched from the International Space Station, uh, and that's, that's because 15% uh, of the global launch capacity goes to service the International Space Station. So we've used that as a secondary payload as, um, um, opportunity to get access frequently to space to iterate on our technology, not only on hardware, but operations, automatic commissioning, calibration, validation, georectification, that entire data pipeline necessary in order to then quickly be able to, uh, to operationalize when the satellites are in a sun-synchronous orbit. Um, last year, uh, we, we were able to combine companies with RapidEye and BlackBridge. Um, and uh, this is also part of the reason for, for my moving out to, to Europe, um, is a consolidation across our activities. We now have offices in uh, Lethbridge, Canada, in San Francisco, um, Amsterdam, and in Berlin. Our company, we have 330 people in our company today. Uh, we, uh, we sell to over 100 partners into a, over 100 different countries our geospatial data and our core products and services. So as 
we've we've heard today on the on the platform segment earlier this morning, as well as uh, previous speakers, and also what we're going to get into in the conversation, is that it's way more than just the pixels. It's way more than just the satellites, um, and this is where uh, it. it they can open up the number of users dramatically, which then decreases the cost of being able to get access to these information and tools if the market grows. Uh, so half of our company is the space side, the, the left two boxes, and the right side is the actual platform, data dissemination, and analytics for, version of our organization. So today, if you imagine having over 100 satellites in space taking pictures of the planet, uh, we needed to automate that entire data, data processing pipeline in order to get it calibrated, georectified, orthorectified, and exposed to the web. We've also built a number of tools to, uh, to stitch together a seamless mosaic. So this is uh, not done, this is not as good as our, our um, hand-corrected ortho mosaics that we, act, that we do for customers today. This is an automated capability. But what it allows for you to do is actually search and discover and see and understand what's happening on the planet. All of our data and all of the, the products that come out of our platform is all OGC compliant, so you can export it to the tools that you actually use and see uh, change in context. Uh, every single one of the, the pixels has uh, traceability to the, the scene that was actually captured, so that allows for an expert user to download the data that they have in order to put it through their own workflows and processes. Uh, we've set up a number of enterprise tools for our customers, which allows for people to get access to workspaces, share workspaces, annotate and share, and over the, the course of the next couple of quarters, allow for users to upload algorithms and their own data to ask their own questions and get their own answers back. So it's an always monitoring mission, and with that, we're able to see the world at an unprecedented rate, um, in, especially in areas that, uh, that are traditionally cloudy we are able to actually capture imagery and have a better chance at being able to get it in, near, in um, red, green, blue, and near infrared. Uh, here is a picture that we captured in Indonesia, and if you look back, the most recent updated picture that was taken was a Landsat image, and it was fairly coarse, and you can see a lot of uh, deforestation occurring, and just last week we captured it again, so you can see this growing. This level of uh, insight into what's happening should allow for us to more effectively understand change on our planet and uh, see how things are evolving. Uh, here's uh, showing a refugee camp uh, in Syria over the course of two months and its relative growth about uh, what's happening there. Uh, being able to peer into uh, contested areas like the South China Sea and understand the, 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 the development and the construction of new, new land areas. Um, and to monitor uh, marine activity and at the speed of business to be able to get this update every single day and actually understand um, how much goods and flow goods are coming through. So that's uh, that's in summary where we are at Planet Labs, and I want to talk through a little bit uh, in order to frame more of the discussion at the panel today around the business models and the disruptive business models. But the business models in general um, is data, products, and value-added services. And on the data side. People differentiate with unique pixels, and that's the majority of where the market is today, is selling pixels. And there's a large network of data aggregators and resellers globally uh, that, uh, that sell into specialty markets and geographies. On the product side, um, it's beginning to go down to the value-added products, with but it's mainly serving the G GIS market. So it's still thousands, tens of thousands of users uh, that, that get access to these types of specialty geospatial data uh, products. Uh, then ultimately, it's the end user, the value-added services that, uh, that, that is the growing portion of our business today. But the disruption, as we've seen it before, is that data is evolving into more information subscriptions. Um, we've seen the, the content providers getting consolidated with Deimos and Earthcast, with Planet and, and, uh, and uh, RapidEye, also with GOI and Digital Globe, so there's consolidation at the same time that there's an explosion of new users. So we're going to get a lot more data. Uh, and we're getting a lot more data, and that's good, because in value-added services, what we actually are seeing is a, is a, a pro proliferation of computer vision and machine learning uh, libraries and tools that are largely driven outside the geospatial market. 
and they eat data, they want data. So with the Copernicus program, with other types of data sources that are out there, it's really going to allow for us to get this living, breathing planet of contextual, near real-time information. And on the product side of things, you'll see that a lot of uh, people are doing, um, are, are building a platform in order to cultivate the ecosystem on top of it. And that's driven by the commoditization of storage and compute and the, 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 the data providers recognizing that they're doing most of that stuff themselves already. And so you'll see everyone that actually has their own custom unique data are building a platform on top of that as well. And that's okay. It's okay to have federated data systems that are out there as long as they're built with really good standards. You let the data lie for where they are, uh, then uh, value-added services and businesses are going to be able to actually pull in to get the contextual information that they need in order to come up with their no own unique products. But where are we today? So on the data side, this is still the largest segment of, of our business. Uh, this is the largest segment of uh, Digital Globe's business uh, because it's, it's what people buy. So you have to go to where the market is today in order to be sustainable financially. And, uh, and so that is still the largest area today. Uh, we aren't in a commoditization of these imageries, uh, this imagery yet. Commoditization doesn't mean free, but it does mean that there's a market, uh, that it's a deterministic pricing. Uh, and, as a and that will happen, that will occur, but we're not there today. On the product side of things, this is, uh, this is a place where there's going to be a lot of experimentation. Um, nobody really knows exactly what the platform economics can be, and you can't really base your business on top of that uh, un until you, you have a market. So we're, we as an industry are right in the, in, in the cusp of having lots of supply, having some need, and needing to create the, the demand in the market side of things. And that's the story kind of of where we are today, is a lot of experimentation, a lot of trial and error, um, and we don't know exactly where, uh, where the business models are going to be. Uh, but ultimately, I think the, the most exciting part uh, is going to be for those that, uh, that are in the downstream services. Uh, people that, that uh, are in this room and part of our network that already understand geospatial data and service, services that then can choose one particular application and come up with something that can work at scale for, for uh, an end user. And that either saves someone money, saves someone's money, someone money, or it actually builds a new product line. Uh, and, and that's probably where we're gonna see some of the breakout companies that actually come from. And with that, it will help to then drive the platform economics on top of uh, uh, the middle layer. Um, the last couple of minutes, what we've done for experimentation is we've opened up all of uh, our data for California, the archive of uh, rapid eye imagery in addition to the planet scope imagery and as it's coming down today. And we're already seeing really unique things that are coming out of this. Uh, the USDA, the US uh, Department of Agriculture releases a crop report uh, based on Landsat data. And one of our users is using the data that we generate and, and doing it autonomously being able to beat the crop report at higher resolution and, and much faster to market. Uh, we're seeing uh, users that are using a lot of open libraries in order to do feature identification, ship identification, and in this case, developed a web app in order to count all the ships and the size of ships uh, that, are, that are in a port. Uh, in, this, in this case, it's the port of San Diego. But the overall trend of, of where we are today is we live in a world where we're extremely reactive to events that occur, whether it's a natural disaster or whether it's, or whether it's illegal deforestation or illegal fishing or other types of, of uh, things that we didn't really actually anticipate. So we're very reactive as a global culture. What's happening with the sensor revolution uh, that we are seeing is that we're getting to more real time, the internet of things, right? We're, we're collecting data, we're getting the pulse of the planet near real time. Uh, and that's kind of where we are, we're just above real time. The promise of it actually hasn't really hit yet, but we will get there over the next couple of years. Uh, then when you combine all of that data that's collected, and you never throw any of it away, uh, when you combine all that data that's collected with the analytics, then we'll get to have great insight into what's happening, what's about to happen, and ultimately get to a point where we can be more predictive in our decision-making activities. Uh, so with that, I'm glad to be here today. I'm here for the next couple of days and I look forward to the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you.